Hey, hello YouTube, Rumble, wherever you guys are watching. So I'm gonna go talk about the third lung system that I built and used over the past few weeks to replace some hydraulic cylinders on a boat lift. So these are all parts you can get off of Amazon and also at your local Home Depot. I'm gonna link all those parts in the description and in this video, I'm also gonna show you how I assembled all these and a little bit of a demonstration of basically this whole setup in use. So sit back, enjoy, and uh, yeah, do at your own risk. Uh, obviously, this is not a officially approved or a sanctioned method of actually performing maintenance underwater on something. But if you're in a pinch and you don't mind taking a few risks, uh, this system is actually pretty flawless. So sit down, grab a soda, and enjoy. All right, so we're gonna start by unboxing the filters and the barb ends, which is like pretty straightforward. So these parts on Amazon are pretty inexpensive. I opted to go with 2.3 micron filters. Uh, reason being, basically, you know, you only have like one life, not to push the whole YOLO thing, but it does kind of, you know, raise some concerns about like, okay, so I'm gonna be breathing in air that's literally being brought in by an air compressor. You know, what sort of, uh, oils from assembly um, even though this is an oil free compressor there could still be some assembly lube on it or some other uh, residue that I'd prefer to not breathe in so I went with 2.3 micron filters uh, just to give me a little bit better peace of mind uh, you really don't need to which would bring the cost down by about 70 bucks uh, but continuing that's just you know your own discretion so with these two filters, so you're going to connect one to the other and use these other cheap couplings, the high flow fittings uh, that are a quarter inch NPT. So those are pretty straightforward. They just link together like Legos, screw one side into the filter, screw the other side into the other side of the filter, and then just connect them in line. So I'm going to do that right here and uh, hopefully not struggle too much. So the big thing is to look at your directional arrows and make sure the airflow is in the proper direction. So you want to connect one to then feed into the other. So you pull out the little inserts, connect your barbs, which in hindsight, yes, I should have used some Teflon, excuse me, Teflon tape, or maybe even that other sort of uh, pipe fitting tape. But I didn't, and this ended up leaking a little bit because of it didn't really bother me enough to fix it in the final assembly, so we're just gonna roll with it. So you take these two, connect these together, very easy. Then you take your scuba hookah hose that's in the uh, back of the frame, and then you put the adapter end, the uh, barb end, and then you can connect that directly to the regulator. So originally I wanted to use the whip that was on the regulator already, so then you'd have something that's a little bit more flexible compared to that hard plastic line for the 50 foot breathing tube. I ended up trying to order a brake line fitting to see if that worked. Unfortunately, the inner diameter did not fit the inside diameter of the scuba, scuba hookah breathing hose. Wow, I'll say that five times fast. So I ended up connecting that hose directly to the regulator, which seemed to work fine. Uh, it did give me a little bit of a challenge underwater kind of maneuvering because the water was uh, in the 50s, so that plastic hose becomes even firmer, which was kind of a problem, but still was able to make it work. So I couldn't find anywhere that stock, that little fitting that would go on the end of the regulator whip to the hookah hose. I even went to my local dive shop. They looked at me like I was a crazy person trying to assemble this thing. And they didn't seem to be too helpful. Uh, maybe, you know, after some time, I'll go back there and see if there's any other solution or maybe if it's something I could custom order. Because it would be really nice to have that flexible, soft line uh, connected to that hard line. So there's the filters connected one to the other. Very, very easy. You can also drop the filter bowl, drain any water if you ended up having any water in there. Maybe that would occur if you live in a very, very 
moist environment. So looking at all of our high flow fittings, we just want to make sure we have enough for the whole correct setup, which I had to end up buying one extra brass fitting, as you can see there, connected to the first inline filter. No big deal. All these links are in the description anyways. So now I'm going to connect the adapter to the scuba hookah hose. So it's the 50 footer I opted for, for the breathing tube. There's various different lengths you can get. So this takes it from its, I think, 3 8 size to the quarter inch NPT. So this allows you to put your uh, high flow air compressor fittings directly to that, which then that connects to that second filter, which again, if you only opted for one filter, it would connect to the end of that first filter. And so this whole system runs on a maximum of 75 PSI. The Cressy regulator is a very nice low pressure regulator, which is why I went for this, because it'll run at 75 PSI, which is fantastic, right? So any air compressor can more or less achieve that. Uh, you can see me struggling here. So I'm putting on that final high flow fitting, dialing that down and then that goes right into your filters. Pardon the poor camera angles. I could not find my tripod when filming this, so I kind of just propped my phone up and hoped for the best. Uh, fortunately, you get a lot of arm hair in there, so uh, apologies. So tighten everything down. It doesn't need to be tight to oblivion, just enough to where you feel safe. So without any of the pipe tape or Teflon tape, you are going to get a little bit of air leak, which isn't the end of the world. So funny thing about this whole setup, after using it for a little while, it's kind of loud to talk with the compressor on. So I shut the compressor off and talked with uh, my buddy who I was doing this with. And uh, sure enough, I forgot to turn the compressor back on and I went back underwater. So that gave me about maybe two minutes or so of operation. And then all of a sudden it started to get harder to breathe. So when I was taking inhales, you could feel that the airflow was just not there like it was when the compressor was running. So that's another thing to keep in mind, you know, make sure your compressors and everything is on and tested before you jump in every time. Uh, otherwise, if you do end up going pretty deep and all of a sudden you're trying to take a breath and your regulator's just not giving you any air, that's a question for concern. So here, right here is that brake line adapter I tried to order that I would hope would allow me to connect that other whip to the back of the hookah hose, which unfortunately did not work. So this part, that little brass adapter you can see right there, that link is not gonna be in the Amazon because it did not end up helping me in any way. So I end up taking the hose off the regulator and connecting that other one directly to it. And uh, out of my frustration, uh, I did not show that on camera. Just kidding, I guess I did. So voiceover Austin here, again, I stand corrected. So unbolting that whip hose right there, very, very simple and easy. So it's got an O-ring in there, it's all nice and happy. Basically just take the big end of that hookah hose, put that thing right on there, tighten her down, and you are ready to rock. Bam, look at that. Scuba Steve, ready to go. So with those O-rings, it does allow it to swivel, which is definitely a bonus. So it, it feels like it's not tight, but somehow it magically it just holds on. So I try to play with it, didn't want to over torque it, and figured I'd just send it on the first attempt in the water. So here we go, filters hookah hook tube and all that. And then that other end on the right, you just plug that right into one of the outlets of the compressor with the compressor set to 75 PSI, guys.
that is the secret number. So now I'm gonna go throw this thing in the water and try it out. All right, y'all. So here we are, uh, we got the compressor hooked up. We got our air filters. There's a little bit of a leak. I could probably tighten those up a little bit more. So we do have pressure. So you wanna set this at 70 um, or 75 for this hose and this regulator, but uh, you know, you can breathe out of it, so. So yeah, uh, we're gonna give her a test in the water and see how she goes. Here's the uh, handy dandy third long. So I'll just show you guys that it works, so I'll just flap around a little bit. But it's been working great so far today and then the past uh, few weeks. Right, so using the little third lung thing for a little while uh, it actually works surprisingly well so the compressor cycles on and off probably about every three minutes which isn't too bad it got a few little air leaks but nothing crazy uh, all in all would really recommend um, maybe a uh, some weights or something like that to keep you down especially well really depends on how deep you're going because I'm having a hard time staying under, especially when power washing. All in all, uh, solid little setup for like 450, 500 bucks. So, try to throw some footage of me actually in the water. It's cold. All right, see you guys. Bye. So you're probably wondering, what was I using this thing for? So I had a buddy that lived on the St. Clair River and his hydraulic boat hoist was starting to fail. After diagnosing it with two bad rear cylinders, I figured, well, we could either pay someone an astronomical amount of money to do it, or I could just do it. So we went with the, hey, I'll just figure it out and go on the fly method. So building this little system was actually pretty cool and fun. Uh, only cost about 450 500 bucks didn't give me any issues this whole time um, definitely would recommend a weight belt when power washing underwater but I was only in about you know 10 to 15 feet of water uh, so overall I would say this is a great setup uh, again do this at your own risk this is you know kind of risky behavior but if you're willing to take that sort of risk I do recommend it so thanks for tuning in, y'all, and stay tuned for more cool projects. Peace.